What's up guys and welcome to part two of our dune buggy mirage engine EFI swap. So part two is pretty much going to consist of getting the engine mounts built and getting the engine dropped into place and on those mounts. Part three will start getting into additional accessories and other parts that are needed, axles and that sort of thing. But for now we need to start fabricating some of these engine mounts so let's get to it. The engine mount for this side of the engine from factory uses this. It's this plate up here and then there's a large mount that sits here and then there's another piece that steps up and it basically hangs from this piece. As you can see on this engine, there are a few areas here that could be used for engine mounts. So then there's this really cool little gizmo here that sits under the oil filter so when you change the oil filter, the oil will run down this little piece here, this bracket. Now, of course, I'm not gonna leave that on because it's gonna impede where this actually gets installed, but if I remove it, I found another bolt hole here that's the same size as the rest of these mounts. Now on the buggy side, okay, we've got mounts over here. On this side, we've got one for the tranny down there and then two over there in the back. So what I've done is I started to modify. This is the first one I've been working on. Okay, so this is the standard mount that comes for the F8 engines. This one and this one to actually, what I'll do is I'll drill these out and I will bolt that right to the side there. And then what I did was I bent this piece back like a tab to be able to utilize that third bolt hole over there right under the oil filter. Hopefully that will not tear any of these tabs off the engine. I don't think the engine is really torquey enough to tear this thing apart, but I don't want to risk it either. So I'm going to use all three of those and of course I'll finish you know, welding up some kind of bracket in here to secure and, and support that. Right, so let me show you guys how I've got this mount working out here. You can see that this lines up uh, pretty well where it's at. This doesn't give me enough clearance for the rear axle. You can see the rear axle is hiding behind this other engine bracket. So rather than modifying all of them, what I think I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna cut this engine mount back here and if I move it about one inch towards the camera and then maybe about two and a half inches backwards over here, then that engine should tuck into place. That'll still give me plenty of clearance behind the seat here for any uh, water hoses or anything else I need to run. And that should bring the axle in line because if I slide this back just a little bit, you can see, you can see where that spline is for the axle to get connected to. Let me show you the mount on the far end here. So the way this originally worked is there was a vertical mount that came all the way up here and I'm going to try to pull the engine over far enough this way to where I can keep this in position like that and then just hang some kind of vertical bracket off of those two bolt holes or perhaps that one. Now something else I'd really like your guys' feedback on. This is a uh, drive-by wire throttle body, meaning that there's no physical connection between a cable and the throttle input to the gas pedal. It's all electronically controlled by the computer. 
So one of my concerns, or a couple of my concerns, is number one, how is this gonna react if it gets wet, or specifically the gas pedal portion of it would get wet, I think, before this would. Of course, I've got some other concerns about the computer. If I get really wild with it, is it going to change the throttle input but more according to emissions controls and that sort of thing? So if anybody has any experience with these uh, dry-fly-wire uh, throttle control systems, any input on that would be really helpful. All right, guys, back to the video. So let me show you the update. I've been working on these engine mounts for about two days. So this has been cut and rewelded a few times. <laughs> I really wanted it to be perfect. And um, the problem that I was running into is the engine was sitting too far back. Uh, when I say too far back, I mean it was too far this way. So I actually had quite a bit of clearance behind here. The alternator's gonna sit right over here. Um, but you can see I still have a good amount of clearance between the intake manifold and the back of the seats. The reason why I didn't just go with it in the original position was if you look at the back axle here, I have very limited uh, room between the back of this mount where the axle goes into. So what I was originally gonna do was I was gonna cut this mount out and relocate it so that I had some room for the axle to get in there. And rather than, I would have had to move this whole bar. So rather than doing that, I, I just figured, well, the best thing to do would be to take this engine mount back out again, move it back about an inch and a half, and re-weld it. So that's what I did. So that's working out really well. Now the other thing, this one's actually kind of funny. So the other thing I've been working on, the way that this engine mount works, this sits right back here. Okay, like that. And you can see it pushes the engine an inch or two back this way. So there's some binding there. The way that this works, this little guy bolts right on there and then will bolt to the back of that mount. But I still had some binding and it was pushing the engine back this way. So I've been re-drilling holes underneath here. I've moved these engine mounts to two different locations to try to wiggle just enough room. There's, I'm just running out of clearance between the A-arm and everything else back here. And I spent about two hours cutting and re-drilling and re-welding this mount all over the place. And then I said to myself, now wait a minute, look at the shape of this thing. It just has an unusual shape where that side is cut out and that side is flat. So just for kicks, I spun it around like so, and then I dropped it on. It fits perfectly with the bolt secure. It'll be about there which leaves about half an inch clearance, and then I'll actually position this about there. But the other really cool thing about discovering the fact that this is cut out perfectly for the engine is rather than have to worry about that little 90 degree mount and all of that craziness, I can just drill a couple of bolt holes here, put some spacers, and just bolt this down directly. And all I needed to do was spin around and drop it down. Now that I've got the engine mocked into place, you can see a little bit better of how this setup works. So I was able to <laughs> turn this around. I wish I had figured that out earlier. This is how this is going to go, and it's locked into place. That transmission is super secure. That's not going anywhere. And this is going to be tricky because this is where our battery box is, and then I've got my intake right here. So it's right up against the battery. So. Um, I'm going to have to figure out some kind of uh, intake that comes off of this and probably comes up to the top. I'll probably mount, you know, just a, a, a cylindrical air filter up on top somewhere, but I'm going to have to feed it off of the throttle body um, because I can't go down with it because I've got two things. First of all, our clutch uh, is going to be going right across here. So this is our clutch arm. Again, right in front of the battery box. In fact, Hopefully that clears the battery. And then I've got our shift linkage on top. Now the previous setup, the shift linkage was actually underneath. It was down under, went under the engine. I'm gonna have to figure out a way to mount our shifting linkage across and down. 
So at this point, we just need to build this back engine mount here, and I think what I'm gonna do is cut two different pieces. As this is normally a two-piece engine mount, but I'm gonna cut it in half, and I'm gonna use one to mount to that hole there, and then I'm gonna use the other one to mount to that hole down under there. All right, so here has, is what I have come up with. I managed to get two bolts in this. Uh, I, I trimmed it down to fit these two next to one another. And now at this point, the only difference between this setup and what the original setup was is the angle here. What I'm gonna do at this point is just cut off this engine mount. I'm gonna drop the whole thing down one inch and I'm gonna put a slightly less steep angle on it like that. All right guys, so we are cut, welded, finished with all three engine mounts. That one of course has been cut and recut and re-welded and cut and welded and a bunch of times. And then this one here, you can see I just finished cutting this one. I made a little bit of a calculation error when I me took my measurements. This was always supposed to be on an angle and I took out the right amount of material from the back which was supposed to be 1.2 inches. So I ended up having to lift this back up and then I had to weld in these little triangles back here for support. So forgive the way that that one looks. I know it's hideous, but it is what it is. I'm more about functionality than form. The other thing, I bought a gloss black which really has not been doing the buggy justice because it really needs a flat black. So I bought this tonight. This is a, uh, I tried a Krylon. It's a paint and primer flat black and I thought, well good, that'll get me close to this uh, flat black that you see in the buggy. However, this is not black. You can probably see the difference here. It's almost like a charcoal color. Don't know what when it happened there, but I probably will not use Krylon again. Uh, to my eye, that does not look like black. <laughs> That's like a grill charcoal color. Uh, you guys tell me what you think. This, this I know is just like a natural flat black. Um, that one is just not. So I'll probably have to go back to the um, Rust-Oleum and try their flat black and hopefully that will match the color a little bit better. So that's it, that's the end of part two. It's taken me, in reality, about four days, uh, full days, to get these engine mounts into position. And of course, fabricating these custom engine brackets like you see here. And then I'm not sure where the other one is, but of course the other one that goes on this side of the engine. About the only one that didn't give me any problems and I still wasted about an hour and a half on it was the one bracket that I'm going to be hanging from up here, which is that one there. In terms of a fourth engine mount, I do not think that right now I'm going to use the fourth engine mount. I'm going to see how secure these three feel and we'll go with that. If I feel like there's a need for it or there's, if I can you know, stand on the transmission and there's too much slop in the transmission, I will probably mock up that fourth engine mount right underneath here and support the tranny from that. Um, but that's it for part two. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you guys can see the complete project as this thing comes along. And check us out as well on Instagram at Dirt Gear TV. I appreciate you guys watching Dirt Gear today and we'll see you next time.